Hello, fourth graders. So we're going to talk about factors today. So find your notebook page. Find this page. Get it cut out and glued into your uh, math notebook. Pause the video if you need more time to do that. All right. So to get started, we got to talk about what factors are. Because we're going to be able to find factor pairs, but we can't talk about that until we know what factors are. So a factor, what is it? This needs to be a lot smaller. A factor is a, make it a little smaller even, a number you multiply to get a product. So like, let's take a look at the example. Uh, put it right over here, perfect spot. All right, so right here, we have arrows pointing to our factors. Our factors are three, and the other factor is four. So usually, we have two factors together. We call this a factor pair. So factor pairs are two numbers you multiply together, like three times four. When we have both of them together, like this, that is a factor pair. We need to find factor pairs so we know if we have all of our factors. So to do this, we start with making a number line. So in this middle part, I'm just going to write my number from 1 to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now we're going to use this to help us keep track of what numbers we should try and which ones we should try next. Now just because a number is not on this list doesn't mean we don't use it. This is to get us started thinking about what our other part of our pair could be. So watch as I do this first one. So we're figuring out one. All right, can I use one times anything to get 12? Well, I can do one times 12. All right, so I did number one. Now I go to the next number on my list. Can I use two? Can I do two times anything? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh yeah. Two times six. Now what about three? Three, six, nine, twelve. Oh yeah. Three times four. All right, so after I tried three, I go to my next number, four. Can I use four? Four, eight, twelve. Hey, oh, and we already used it, didn't we? So that's how I know I'm done. Once I start to see numbers again and reuse them, I'm done. So I've done four times three already because I did three times four. Now, this is part one. We found our factor pairs. Something else that we need to do then is make a list of factors. So then I take it and I'm gonna make a list from smallest to biggest of the numbers that I just used only. So I look, my smallest factor was one. So somewhere underneath, I'm gonna do a one and then a comma. My next smallest number isn't 12, it's two. I look at all of my factor pairs. My next one isn't 12 or six, it's three. Then four, then six, then 12. I want to put them from smallest one to my biggest one is going to be the number that I'm factoring is my 12. Let's try one more together. We're going to keep our number aligned and we're just using this as a tool to help us stay organized. So we're going to factor 24. We're going to start always with the first number on our list, number one. Can I use one? Well, I sure can. I can do one times 20. Four. All right, what about two? Can I use two? Well, two 
times 12 is 24. God. All right. What about 3? Can I use 3? 3, 6, 9, 10, 12. Hey, almost there. 12, 14. Keep going through. 24 divided by 3. I can do 3 times 8. That's right. So 3 times 8. Now I'm looking to my next number in my list. I'm going through one at a time so I don't miss any. Four. Can I use four? Four. Four times six. I can. Four times six is 24. Next number I want to try is five. Five times anything get me 24? Nope, I could get 25, but that's too big. I need 24. All right, so now I think through six. Well, six times four, and I already did four times six, so I'm done because I'm repeating numbers already. All right, so that's part one. We find our factor pairs. Part two, we make a list of our factors. So now I'm looking at these factor pairs, and I'm looking at each factor by itself now, and I'm going to put each factor from the factor pairs from smallest to biggest. So my first factor is 1. My next factor would be 2. Looking the next biggest one, 3. And then 4 and 6 and 8 and 12. And our last one is 24. So the first thing we do is find our factor pairs. And then we make our factor list. So if we look at this list, we know all of these numbers can make 24 somehow. So find factor pairs, make a list. I want you to try 30 and 36. Think through your numbers, okay? Think through your patterns. Can I use them? Something that I find helpful is when you have really big numbers start to get bigger, like 30 and 36, do a division problem to find some of these smaller factors that are hard. Like for 30, I would set up and do 30 divided by 2. Well, that can go in one time. 10. Oh, 2. Left with 1, 0. Oh, yeah, 5. So I could do, we know, already, okay, sorry, we already know 1 times 30. And then by using division, we found our other factor. We can do 2 and our quotient of 15. Think through. Can we use 3? Yeah, 3 times 10. Remember, we're working through in an order, so we don't miss any factors. We don't have to think extra hard. Think through. Can we do 4? 30 can we do four? Nope. All right. Can we do five? We can. We can do five times six. All right. So we're done with part one. Part two is to make our list of factors. Good. So for this one, we would start with one, two, three, five, Six, one, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six. Then we've got ten, fifteen, and our last factor is thirty. We use our factor pairs to make our factor list. I want you to try thirty-six all on your own. Think through how many of these numbers can you use to make factor pairs, and then make your factor list. Pause the video while you solve in factor 36. All right, let's take a look. We know we can do 1 and 36. Can we use 2? Well, 36 is an even number, so we can. You might have needed to do division to find 2 and 18. Can we use 3? We can. We can find 3 
and 12. What about 4? Four? 4 times 9. Can we use 5? Nope. Can we use 6? Can we use 6? Think through our multiples of 6. We can. 6 times 6. And let's just double check. 7? Nope. 8? Nope. 9? Oh, we already used 9. So we're repeating, so we are officially done finding factor pairs. Now we need to make our list. So you should have had 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. This one was tricky because you needed to just write it one time. You don't need two 6s. 6, then we have 9, 12, 18, and 36. So that is what we got going on here. All right, so now we have our homework. Problem th page 379 and 380. 1, 3, 9, 12, 13, 16, and 24. So let's take a look. All right, so we're on page 379. So 1 and 3, I believe. Yep, 1 and 3 on the top part. So for 1 and 3, you just have to write the missing factor to finish each factor pair. So 1 and blank and 25. So 1 times what? Something times 25. Something times 15. Okay. 1 and 3 up top. Then we have 9, 12, and 13 in here. 9, 12, and 13. This time you need to write the factors of each number. So think back to our notebook page. You have to find your factor pairs first, and then you're going to list your factors. So exactly what we did in our notebook page. You're probably going to want another piece of paper to show your work on because the space isn't very big, okay? You can use the other spaces because we're only doing nine, what is it, nine, sorry, I keep forgetting, nine, twelve, and thirteen. Nine, twelve, and thirteen. Find your factor pairs and write out your factors. Then, on the back side, number 16 is a review on multi-step, so solve that for me. And then on the very bottom, number 24. Okay, figure out which of the following describes the arrays Dina can make. Okay, think through which one is the best choice, okay? All right, so that's what you got from math today. Let me know if you have questions. Bye.